Today I'm going to go ahead and adjust the azimuth of this uh, Sharp GF9191 stereo cassette recorder that I'm in the process of restoring. I don't think that it, it actually needs to be adjusted, but since I'm restoring this unit anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. The improper, the azimuth adjustment, if that's wrong, that can go ahead and cause like high frequency a high frequency loss. Now th this adjustment can just be off by just a little bit and a little bit here has big constant consequences as far as the high frequency loss is concerned. What you want is for the tape head to be basically horizontal with the tape path. But my motto here is if it ain't broke don't fix it if you have a problem with high frequency loss, I would go ahead and clean the head really good first. A lot of times there might be dirt on the head, you can't even really see it. Or you would need some demagnetization or it might be, could also be um, a problem with your audio circ circuitry. Well that's kind of uh, a long shot before you go ahead and uh, make this azimuth adjustment. the alignment screw which I'm pointing at here with the pin normally has some kind of a screw locking compound on it I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my wife's uh, nail polish once I'm done because if I don't um, the vibration of the cassette mechanism might slowly work the screw loose over time and that's going to be uh, causing me some problems with sound so that being said, if you don't have something like Loctite or home, you can go ahead and use the fingernail polish to prevent movement. Here's my hookup. I have my dummy load put in the 4 ohm position. I've got the speaker cables running from the dummy load to the speaker output jacks of the Sharp GF9191. In order to take the reading I'm going to go ahead and use my old Heathkit uh, AC millivoltmeter and I've got that hooked up here across the dummy load speakers. What I'm aiming for is when I make my adjust is the highest reading when I turn the screw. I'm going to make my adjustment with this non-magnetic screwdriver, although you could probably get away with it just using a regular screwdriver. But you shouldn't come too close to the head. When I say the tape head should be horizontal with the tape path, you see here that the head is not tilted in any way to the side. So that's an example of good azimuth. Now this is an example of really bad azimuth. In reality, you won't, really won't see it like that bad. It'll just be off by a tiny amount, but that tiny amount will make a lot of difference as far as high frequencies are concerned. You can either use a ready-made test cassette. A lot of them will have like a 6.3 kilohertz signal on it, or you can just go ahead and make your own. I didn't have... Uh, standard 6.3 kilohertz test cassette so I just went ahead and made one. I just suggested my audio generator for 6.3 kilohertz set the tape recorder to minus 10 dB and then I started recording. I got the tape in and I got the play button pressed I got my volume on maximum and I got the treble and the base set at a neutral position. What I'm going to do now is get the highest possible reading on my AC voltmeter here. I'm going to go ahead and start doing the adjust now. Okay, like I said, I'm going for the maximum possible reading. You can see the meter going up. So 
going to have forward in and then once I reach a certain point it's going to start going back down so now I'm going to go back up again I think the highest point was right about there so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and then put a little bit of nail polish on there to hold the screw in place and that'll be it so adjusting the azimuth screw, that alignment screw it did make somewhat of a difference although it looks like that screw had been in in the same place for years since it did have screw locking compound on it I think if you don't have an audio generator to make a test cassette you can probably just record some music like classical music or something with the, some with high frequencies in it to make a test cassette that way I used my Nakamichi cassette recorder to make the test cassette